start calibrating our probe so we can get the bioreactor ready for auto clip. Once we get the, uh, the bioreactor and the auto clip, then we'll basically be having a brief discussion. I have a couple of PowerPoint presentations <laughs> that will go in detail about uh, cell culture. Thank you. Soon will we be ready for the auto class? I would say it's anybody here use a pH probe before? Yes. Say it again. Yeah. Anybody use one. a pH probe before? Yeah. The smallest one. What is it measured? Hydronium ion concentration. Right. Why is it important? to maintain a, a, a safe environment for whatever you're growing. So just like us, the cells really, if you, if you want to think of it that way, the cell is just like a human being. It needs everything that we consume to survive, to go on about our daily life. The cells also need that to survive. So for that, we main days, various process parameter that we monitor, such as pH, DO, um, we also got to make sure that they have an ideal temperature setting, which we use a temperature probe to maintain that. The, the temperature probe tell us what the temperature is in the heating blanket in a water jacketed vessel. Well, this one have a heating blanket would either warm up or cool down to provide the optimal temperature environment. Just like us, they need to eat. Uh, so we feed them glucose, sometimes the media itself have all the uh, necessary or, uh, ingredients such as uh, trace element, zinc, copper, uh, fiber, just like us. Everything that you can think that we need to survive, the cells also needs it. Um, so just like us, they produce waste. And uh, the waste also produce in the bioreactor. So, you must find a way to either remove the waste or find a way to basically remove the cell from the waste. If you want to extend the long, if you want to extend the, uh, the cell culture life cycle. One of the troubling uh, as a bioprocess engineers that we're having really is to find a way to isolate the metabolism of waste. I will share with you numerous process that we're actually developing and addressing in order to remove the waste because the waste has become a limiting factor as far as us expanding the life of the cell to further produce the material of interest. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to go basically start with how to calibrate a pH probe, how to calibrate a DO probe, how to set up our bioreactor for a run, and how we choose the uh, process parameters and why. Can you talk about the DO probe? Because that's something they're probably not familiar with. Yes, I will talk uh, as you get, as, as in I get it. into it. Yes. So the DO probe comes from the manufacturing, as you can see, in a box like this. I mean, there is manufacturing. There is Mettler, there is Hamilton. Uh, I think there's like three or four major companies that make a pH probe. Um, this, you would hear it referred to as two electrochemical or uh, your photoelectro photo uh, probe. This uh, actually in a few years might become obsolete because right now they have different technology that they are using called optical pH, which wow. doesn't use, uh, so, as you can see, this, this probe is gel filled. So there is gels on it that uh, pretty much maintain the integrity of the sensor so it doesn't dry, so it can still communicate uh, and read the hydrogen ion that's present in the media or in the culture. So after, because once you put it in the vessel, you have to auto it. The probe itself has a limited life, shell, uh, life cycle. Typically, we disregard them after 10, 15 autoclave cycle run, mm -hmm. depending whether it was a liquid um, autoclave cycle or whether it was a gravity cycle. Gravity cycle is a lot more uh, 
wear, cause a lot more wear and tear on the probe. So therefore, it doesn't last as long. Whereas a liquid cycle um, allow the probe life to extend uh, a lot longer than the gravity cycle. So once you receive this probe uh, from the manufacturer, you would open the box. Um, of course, whenever you are working with any type of chemical, it's ideal to wear glove. Always wear your safety gear. Would you Always. like some Michelin? Um, <laughs> I'm okay. I mean, I've been doing yeah, okay. it. For, okay. for the purpose of our training here, mm -hmm. I'm not going to run because we're not really dealing with I think that's too dangerous, but always wash your hand afterward because it's you never know what was training in here, what was the previous chemical that was in the lab, mm -hmm. or even especially with your eyes. Always wear protective eye goggles. I can tell you numerous of mm -hmm. the horrible stories that happen. I think that was As the first thing see, I said with you guys, remember? Eyes yeah. is the one that always really scares me. Eyes. Yeah. Always. And remember, you're working with bioreactors. It's called bioreactors for a reason because there is reactive reactions happening in the bioreactor. You have no idea what's going on at a given time. That's why you use offline analyzers to measure certain content to tell you what's going on. Right? And also, because we're dealing with air, which I'll touch um, further on later on, sometimes if your filter gets clogged, it will build up pressure in your vessel. The build pressure in your vessel, it's a glass. It will explode. Mm. Myself. I'm speaking from experience. You don't want to witness one of these things explode. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> That's why we have a nice glass. Okay. We're going to have a glass. Okay. <laughs> this, because, I mean, I'm not trying to scare you, but it's dangerous mm -hmm. because the glass flying is everywhere. Mm -hmm. So as, as uh, manufacturing, we have something called pressure release valve, which will basically determine what is the maximum amount of pressure this vessel can take before it actually explodes. Mm -hmm. And we'll put the pressure release valve. Once it reaches certain pressure, it would open by itself mm -hmm. and it release the pressure out. The problem is that sometimes because the valve open to the open air, then your virus is contaminated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. But because usually because it's main, you're maintaining your positive pressure, which means you're going, uh, you're going the, the, the air is skipping. So it's preventing the particles from going inside the vessel. So we call that positive air. So that will sometimes help maintain the integrity of your run. So back to the pH probe. Uh, the reason why they send you that little razor is yeah, it's wow. a little razor inside of the box of ship with it. It's, if you can see here, so there is a little uh, adhesive that clogs or block the little entrance here for the probe. In order to get an accurate reading, you have to scratch, you have to scratch that little um, blockage, kind of like surface. So we usually go and just s slowly and evenly scrap off the excess material. And I'm going to pass this around, and you can see that it's still in main covered. Mm -hmm. Pass it around. Can you only use it once, or can you reuse it? No, you can reuse it. Oh, okay. Once you, so once you scrap that, you can always reuse it. However, if you're not using it, you must store it in storage solutions. Oh, okay. okay. And there's, uh, so do you have, you have, you have a pH uh, store solution? Yeah. Yes, or yeah, right. right. So that's just the pH electrode. I'm sorry? That's just the pH electrode. This is the pH electrode. Yeah. Boom. 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 